let me sing you the song of my people pretty much and on the note of singing the song of your people hello everyone and welcome to season two episode five of star trek october uh if this is your first time joining us hello uh we're a star trek adventures actual play in the year 2414 on a starbase in the sabine expanse um, what this means in the grand scheme of things is that my Fenrir, Matahari, Groundskeepers, all those kind of are in the same canon as this game, but you don't need to have watched any of those to enjoy October. But if you do want to play catch up, the VODs are on YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, let's see, in terms of announcements this week, um, I think I only really have a couple. Um, the first is that two weeks from now, as in the 24th, um, I will be launching two new shows the same day. Um, well, assuming Session Zero this week goes well. But the first one is going to be a Warhammer 40k Black Crusade game. Uh, I've always wanted to actually get to the Black Crusade part of the Black Crusade rules. So if you're interested in Warhammer 40k, uh, definitely give that a look out. That's going to be at uh, 2 p.m. on the 24th. Um, the other game that I'm going to start up is the Romulan game of Star Trek Adventures, uh, Star Trek Safe. And that will be at 9 p.m. on the 24th, uh, all times Eastern. Uh, let's see, anything else to address? Uh, no, I think that's probably it. So why don't we go around and have everyone introduce themselves. And since it is a new year, we're going to start at the bottom and go up. So, Stetko. Yeah, I'm Watney. I play Chief of Security of October, uh, Lieutenant Commander Stetko. Uh, you can find me on Twitch at Doc Watney. Hey guys, uh, I'm Aaron. I play Dr. Dottig, the Tellerite Chief Medical Officer. Uh, I'm not really on social media that much because I'm an old man, but at Panorama Tint for my sporadic content. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Matthew. I play Lieutenant Jana, the Cation Chief Engineer of Deep Space October. And uh, I am likewise a very old man, as you can tell from all the gray, so you cannot find me on social media, really. It's a distinguished gray. Um, I will not take offense at the old man comments. Uh, <laughs> I am John. I play uh, Lieutenant uh, Terrell, the uh, pilot uh, human of uh, Deep Space October, and I would guarantee I am the oldest person here. <laughs> but I do have some social media presence. Well, the cool thing is you get to play the youngest person on the team. Mm. I am Dag. I play Captain Kiswick of Deep Space October, and I am joined by this illustrious crew as we continue from what happened last week. Holy smokes, man. Yeah, last week was a doozy, but we'll catch you up in case you're just tuning in now. But first, let's run our shiny introduction. And welcome back. Uh, before I go any further, I will apologize if any jet noise leaks through. Um, I am using a video broadcast, which filters about 99% of it, but when they hit the afterburners above your house and everything's shaking, there's only so much NVIDIA can do. So again, my apologies if jet noise <laughs> leaks through. But uh, something I like doing for Star Trek Adventures especially is having the players do an opening log. And uh, Mr. Kiswick, I believe that falls to you today. Computer, classify this entry under Kiswick Zeta, partition 
Subsection Intelligence, Admiralty only. The great wound of the Dominion War has been reopened after 40 years. By means unknown, the being known to us as the female changeling has been found in an infantile state. Our instruments suggest that her bio-temporal signature is centuries off, meaning that it's actually her, but long before she ever begins to threaten the Federation. All those faces, the hundreds of officers and colleagues who I knew personally, and the billions of others stabbed deep into my heart. Suddenly their fates are in flux, in my hands. I'm not the only one who's considered altering the fate of this being. It's no secret, I detest temporal causality. Like a sprout, it entrances you with many desires, and before you know it, you're being devoured. There are already too many choices, too many lives on the line. Add to that, my engineers and science teams have said, even if we do tamper with her fate, there's no way of knowing how we'll affect her or our timeline once we find a way to send her back. And we must send her back. She cannot remain here. If word got out that we held the key that unlocks a better future for the Federation, even more lives would be at risk. Old and long-settled agendas would suddenly be reopened. Lieutenants Jana and Terrell have been tasked with figuring out how she got here as soon as possible. All other concerns are secondary. Adding to the difficulty, I'm told that the best bet for her return and the integrity of the timeline is to employ the same method that brought her here. Something about time-space synchrony. You can find their logs attached. And just when things couldn't get more complicated, Commander Stedko has detected a Breen patrol fleet entering this sector. The Breen, who were the Dominion's next fodder after their alliance with Cardassia crumbled. If they were to get a hold of the Changeling, they could kill it or revere it, who knows? The mission stands. Get this Changeling back where it came from. So help us all. End luck. Very nice, and um... I'd give you momentum, but you're already at five. So, no momentum for you, unfortunately. I'll let you keep the five, though. <laughs> but, uh, what, real quick, I did want to get a vibe check. It sounds like the music is coming through nice and clear. Um, how is the ambient noise? Do I need to lower it, raise it? Can you even hear the ambient noise, I guess, is even the question. You can hear it, I just checked. Yeah. Okay. It's nice. All right. If it does get too loud or too soft stream, just yell at me and I'll fix it. But yeah, uh, we are going to now cut to the Umbriel's ready room. And uh, stepping into the ready room is none other than uh, Mr. Dottig. Computer, secure the room. Authorization, Kiswick Iota Sigma Kappa Blue. And as soon as you step in, Dottig, and the captain says that, the doors seal behind you and a literal blue light, uh, much like a blue alert, filters through the lights in the room. It sort of casts the captain in an ominous light uh, simply by the virtue that he has a view screen behind him. So he kind of has that blue flashing light uh, emanating from sort of like an aura effect behind him. Blue. So time travel. We know it. Have you been briefed about what we found out there? I have not good for anybody save for that i just got off the call with myself an older me much older much older yeah i know it doesn't seem like you get that far but yeah you are a uh, testament then or rather your future self is a testament to uh, the healing properties of a hostile disposition or the hostile, hostile disposition of a good doctor, at least. Have you ever heard of the Temporal Cold War? Uh, it's. I, mean, uh, I don't. Uh, it's I don't battle. particularly. I don't particularly pay attention to history that hasn't happened yet. I try not to, but some of it has happened, and apparently, uh, we're, I've been told that the station and the ship have become a new front in that war. Especially since uh, we met Mr. Merlin. Right. Yeah. This, uh, the appearance of the female changeling is a byproduct of one of the skirmishes. And 
Uh, apparently, he's left it to me to figure it out. Your future self has left it to you to figure out something that you haven't done yet. Apparently. And I'm not sure if he's done it because, you know, temporal mechanics. Right. Also, that thing I told you to reserve for me and Jen's anniversary. Right. I I'm told I shouldn't get it. It's going to go bad. Really? Oh, that was a great idea. Apparently he did too, but he told me not to. I mean, can I keep it? Sure, just don't give it to Jen. Oh, I, 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 I mean, I if, promise. If if I want to continue having anniversaries, that is, I, I need to make sure that the, this changeling gets back where it came from, or Jen and I will never meet. Hmm. So, how do we do it? I'm waiting for Terrell and Jana to give me some advice here on how it got here and how to send it back. And at the same time, we've got the brain breathing down our throat in just a minute. I mean, how far inside, our, in, inside of their space are we? We're really close, a parsec or two, but you know, they have patrol fleets that patrol their space and they're well within their rights to investigate. They may have very well detected the temporal anomaly that we just resolved. Hmm. Well, they do tend to take an uh, irrational dislike of non breen Yeah, well, we can't let them discover it. Their alliance with the Dominion could be rekindled or at least exacerbated by this discovery. So what I just told you doesn't leave this room. Consider it done. All right. Computer, release the locks. And of course, uh, all the locks are disengaged. The ominous blue light stops flashing. You are free to move about the cabin. I need to be getting back to sick bay. If you need me, you'll find me there. Understood. As you step out, we are going to go now to one of the Umbriel's labs. Now, reviewing the Umbriel's talents, uh, we do need to talk about a few things. So, um, first of all, John and Terrell, you're in one of these laboratories, but the Umbriel specifically has advanced research facilities. And what this means is that whenever you are researching or otherwise working in a lab and you're assisted by the ship's computers uh, and science, you get bonus momentum, which will give you more, mo more uh, questions you can ask for free. Um, the other thing I should mention is that the Umbriel does have advanced sensor suites. So anything involving these sensors is reduced down to, well, by one to a minimum of zero. Um, you can't go negative one. That would that would be a very interesting mechanic. But uh, so far, Terrell and Jana, uh, the laboratory looks like this is the first time anyone's used it, really, uh, which means that sort of the uh, new lab smell is here. Uh, it's sort of a mix between new car smell and minty freshness. Can't really place why they've picked this scent, but it's new. That's what I'm getting at here. And in fact, when you first step into the laboratory, the lights flicker on for the first time. And I think where we're going to start is we find Jana underneath sort of that circular table that we see in many laboratories. And Terrell uh, is tapping something on the console up front. Uh, and you hear Jana sort of perform a little bit of percussive maintenance, probably to get the thing working. I, you know, I tell you, man, I do not understand what they were doing when they built this ship. I mean, it, you, you can barely fly it. It's it's a brick. And the science labs don't work. I... You know, I, it, it, they all can't be perfect. And uh, John is walking. I mean, uh, Terrell's going around. And you know that plastic film that's on everything? You're peeling you it all off. Get it? He's peeling it off a little bit. Ugh. Because he knows it's going to bother Jonna later. 
You see Jana sort of rises from beneath the, uh, the console where he's been reconnecting EPS power taps. He looks at the, uh, the console. You've, you've, just, you've taken it out of its original packaging. Like that was, that was going to preserve it. That was going to be perfect. Like now everything's ruined. That was the only thing they did right. Actually, uh, there is a slight reactionary delay because of the plastic film. Well, that might be an important thing for you when you need precision maneuvering on the bridge, but I, I, I it doesn't matter to me. With that, he just like, <laughs> Okay, well, that that actually is better. I mean, if you're going to ruin it, just might go, just go all the way. It looks great. It's all shiny. He's putting his fingers on for everything. I'll get a maintenance crew down here to, to wash those off. That's, that's so fine. anyway, how do you think it, it got here? Or... I mean, I'm under the theory, well, obviously, that it was sent here. Do you believe in some kind of, like, predestination paradox, or that this was some kind of deliberate machination of a foreign power of some kind? Yeah, I think somebody um, is trying to, pardon my French, fuck with time. Well, that does seem reasonable. I mean, we were sent out here under mysterious circumstances. We still don't know where Kaja got those coordinates. And Which now is we going have to be a very interesting question. Well, assuming the Breen don't kill us before we have a chance to answer that question, yes, it'll be a fascinating conversation that the captain will have. Well, I hope he decides to send it back. You know. I just have this feeling that last minute he's going to be like, oh, we could prevent the whole war. You know, it just seems like something the captain might do. You know, it know was he... a lot of damage. There was a lot of things that happened because of it. But I mean, it's such a formative thing. You can't really get rid of it. You can't oh. stop it from happening. It would probably mean that neither of us were born, so I do understand that, but it would probably save the lives of billions of people across the quadrant. If the choice came down to, I don't know, you or I living, and that taking the deaths of billions of people, would we make that choice now? Oh, does that really change what it is for the, the past? The many. I think... Do we have any Vulcans on this crew? Could we get some, one of them down here maybe to help us? Because Oh, well, that's how I understood it all the time. So, but, I mean, this all falls under the, the umbrella of you just need to set things back to the way they were. That doesn't sound like you at all. You're the one who's always bucking authority, challenging the system, trying to break free of the constraints of the past. Oh, yes, I, I completely agree that we should change things, but not to the point where you're, you know, going back and, you know, doing things to the world. Like, I mean, it would be fun to go back and first, first of all, see how Dodd lost his leg, but then to, pre then to prevent it, that'd be kind of cool. But what kind of impact would that have? Would he be anywhere near the sour pussy is today if we did that? You know, and he's kind of a lovable sourpuss, so I think we need to keep things the way they are. I, I don't think you could remove enough pieces from him to change who he is at his heart. right? If he was just like a, a brain in a box, or if he was transferred to some sort of high-tech android body after he died, he would still be the same man, I think. But I, I do take your point. Uh, we can't go changing the timeline, even if it would save people. We have no idea what kind of ramifications it might have. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to find out when and where it came from, I guess, so that we know how to send it back to the point where it came from. Imagine the look on the person's face that sent it here when it just reappears right in front of them. Well, I hope it doesn't that, appear no. right in front of them because that would mean that they just send it right back or do something else with it. But well, you know I, I, mean. I take your meaning. Yeah. And on that note, uh, your friend, quote unquote, Athena sort of does one of those hologram things where they kind of come in from the ceiling upside down and they go, oh, good. You guys are done debating temporal mechanics. Um, I fixed the conduits leading it. It should work now. Your your console there sh should work now. 
Oh, I, I thought I'd gotten that myself. Um, let's just say that um, you remarking that the ship was scuffed. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, hey, you're going to love what I just found on the sensors. And I'm going to give both Terrell and Jana. I'm going to give you access to a handout. It's literally just stuff out in space. Stuff out in space. I couldn't think of a good name. We'll just I was like, fuck it. It's <laughs> it's stuff out in space. Or a David Bowie album for that. Probably. You know, as much as I've enjoyed my tenure on Deep Space October, I kind of enjoy being on a starship even more. There's just so much to see out there. You never know what you're gonna run into. So Yeah, I mean it's not every day you run into two black holes. <laughs> And those X-ray emissions, I mean, that might be fascinating for some kind of survey mission for maybe an Oberth class science vessel. That's a little boring, but Micronebula, that, that's that's interesting. Well, the black, well, I mean, the black hole's about to also eat the rogue, rogue planet that's sending something. Athena, can you try to work with the universal translator on that? And uh, Athena kind of hops down from the ceiling, if you will, uh, sort of lands and says, well, um, about that, uh, sort of been working on that on the side. And best I can tell so far, uh, this predates pretty much anything out there. Um, my guess, Takan, some other Takan like entity. Uh, well, let's tell the captain and set a course for that immediately. I mean, who knows what we might be able to find there. There could be an entire Tacon stellar transporter or something like that. We have to get there before it's consumed by the black hole. No, I completely agree. Uh, Athena, can you get any more high resolution sensor scans of it before we get closer or any information as to what we might be able to find there? Uh, problem is, is we've got some basically debris from other planets that have been torn apart by the black holes. Uh, at this range, no, we, we would have to get much closer. And out of character, Jim, looking at the coordinates of the uh, rogue planetoid in the black hole, are they within mm -hmm. Breen space or are they? They are within Breen space. They're literally just on the other side of the border. Hmm. I mean, that's a decision for the captain to make, but I think it's fascinating. And see, this is a perfect example of a boundary I'm willing to push. Under normal circumstances, I'd probably complain, but uh, if it means getting a crack at one of those stellar transporters, or even the chance at it, you've got my support. And it's a good thing that we brought your, uh, your Christmas present along with us. Oh yeah, I can't wait to take it out. I've already peeled all the plastic off. That, that sounds like bad luck, but I'll still go with you. All right, and with that, we're going to uh, head towards the head towards uh, the bridge, and on the way, Terrell's like, "So, what about that weather?" <laughs> I see what you did there. So, as you guys are in transit, uh, we're actually going to go to the Umbriel Sick Bay, where Kiswick, you're not there, but Stetko and Dottig are. Mm -hmm. uh, Stetko, uh, I think it's probably safe to say that you specifically have been guarding the changeling simply to make sure that news doesn't get out. Is that more or less a good guess? That is correct. Cool. So I'd like to imagine, Stetko, that you actually have like maybe taken over the doctor's office and rerouted the tactical displays so that you can still perform your duties as security officer and chief tactical officer just from sick bay. And yes. it's one of those things that uh, Dottig, you walk in and Stetko is in your office uh, doing something with the sensors. Before we start, can I get a little bit of information from the log? It was mentioned mm -hmm. that she had received some kind of transmission or something. Uh, yes, uh, you were able to tell that there is a Breen, shall we say, delegation, uh, contingent of ships uh, coming in this direction. Uh, you're looking at maybe about four or five ships, all more or less the same of the Umbriel, the same size as the Umbriel. So we're very outnumbered. More or less, yes. 
Okay. Uh, so yeah, Stecco's in the office. She's keying on the console. Everything kind of looks like patchworked together. And she seems to be like looking over scans. Can I help you, Commander? Is there a reason you're in my office at my desk to my terminal? Why? Well, why is that isolinear cable out? Uh, well, I had to bring some of my workstation in here. Um, your quarantine procedures in sick bay are far more advanced than in any other part of the ship, and I needed to um, effectively eminent domain this area to ensure the safety of the package. Commander, do, you want to do you want to fight about it? There is an old saying. Tellerites do not argue for reasons. They simply argue. I'll take any opportunity to fight about anything. I think you know that. However, given these circumstances, your initiative is likely warranted. I have no desire to be shot to pieces by the brain or taken as slave labor or to give this changeling over. I am not entirely sure why we're even still in this area of space at all. My guess is to examine the anomaly and figure out how this happened and to not disturb the timeline. But at a certain point, the danger becomes clear and present and in front of you and the timeline, the worries of the timeline diminish. Well, I mean, you know, timelines don't mean all that much when you're stellar debris or uh, ionized particles or... You're not... On your hands me... and knees in a brain dilithium mine. You're not making me feel better. Good. Good. This is not a time to feel good about anything. This is a time to get down to business and do what we have to do. I consider myself a bit of a stoic doctor. Prepare really, for the worst, expect the best. No, no, see, that's where you're that's where you get it wrong. It's expect the worst, prepare for the even worse. All right. Well, I consider us fairly well prepared, although I'm not sure how much longer I'll let the captain keep us here. What are you going to do? I'm just going to make a very strong suggestion, Date. Don't get your hopes up here. <laughs> like, how strong on the scale of, like, give me a number? You seem like you're trying to distract yourself from something. Is there anything I can help you with? Truth be told, uh, well, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you the truth. I remember reading reports regarding the brain treatment of prisoners and I It's not encouraging. And the thought that some or all of the crew could be taken, subjected to horrors, and then I would not be permitted to attend to them is disconcerting. We certainly are a long way from home. But You know, you did beat that Klingon in a fist fight, so I think you are probably qualified to handle the brain. Well, we do have a good tactical team on board, but we're far outnumbered. Mm -hmm. She kind of like uh, 
plays. She still has that knife that she took from the Nausicaan. Mm-hmm. She kind of like plays with it on the desk a little bit, and then goes her hand goes back to the console. Yeah, you know, did and, I uh, explain? Did I explain to you how that's symbolic of his testicles? Even better. <laughs> On that note, I'm actually going to spend two threat that Dottig, you hear the sound of something shattering behind you. And you look into the quarantine field to see that the vessel that was containing the changeling has, well, ruptured. The changeling itself is just sort of a puddle of ooze on the floor. You know, that kind of orange, goopy, uh, viscous fluid. But um, yeah, it's no longer in its container. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. I can, I can handle this. Um, Dottie will get like another, like medical canister, mm-hmm. and uh, say computer secondary force field layer one meter behind me. And then there's that boom sound as a force field activates. <clears throat> computer, drop the force field directly in front of me, please. Room. And he'll actually like get down on his knees and be like, "Hello." I'm not sure if you can hear me, but my name is Dr. Dottig, but I insist that all kids just call me Dr. Keeve, okay? I don't want you to be afraid, but what I need you to do for me is just get in this canister. It'd be much more comfortable than that broken glass. Mr. Dottig, I'd like you to roll me a command, or no, a presence and medicine, please. That's never been rolled before. That's uh, rolled presence, before. medicine, difficulty of three. Uh, I'm gonna buy an additional d20. All right. Uh, and does my does my focus in either xenobiology or anthropology or linguistics? Can I'll give you linguistics help? on this All one. Right. All right. Uh oh. No oh dear. <laughs> So, um, I have good news and bad news. That's that's apparently how we're starting today. What would you like first? Oh, give me the bad news. Bad news. The changeling just sits there. It doesn't even boop, doesn't move. It just sits there. All right. That's the good news. That actually is both the good and bad news. Hmm. Is it like, is its coloration still... You know, yeah, the visual still... scan, it's still fairly like healthy looking. Can I do a quick scan to check its morphogenic matrix? Yeah, and I'll give it to you free because you're in sick bay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it's it's fine. It's just sort of chilling there. So I'm gonna try to like use my hand and maybe like scoop it into the So that's what the complication is gonna be, is that when you go to reads to touch it. It actually forms a duplicate of your hand and slaps your hand away. And then it goes back to being a puddle. Now, this is quite interesting. I believe further tests are required. Stetco, don't tell the captain. Uh, tests? What? It's it's manifesting. It's It's learning. So she makes sure any weapons that she had out are hidden. Mm-hmm. And then she taps her comm badge. This is Deco to Captain. This is Kishwick. Go ahead. We have a situation here in Sick Bay. You might want to get here as soon as possible. Understood. Kishwick out. And Kishwick will call for a side to side transport. No. Actually, I have a uh, an alternative, if you don't mind me chipping in as a suggestion. Chip in. So basically, you go to get in the nearest turbo lift, and when you do, you run smack dab into Terrell and Jana. Uh, Lieutenants. Captain, uh, we were just coming to see you. Uh, we need to go to sick bay. I heard there's a situation developing. All right, sir. Sick bay. Yeah. Any news on our uh, new arrival? Jaro? Oh, you, you go. You're, uh, you're, you're much better at uh, the bad news. Well, it, it's I have good news and bad news, sir. What would you like first? All of it. Your discretion. 
Okay. Well, we've found an anomalous planetoid, a rogue planet that's descending into a black hole. And there are some strange readings, a kind of repeating signal that seems to suggest that there might be some kind of, I don't know, Takan artifact or other ancient civilization operating there. That's the only thing that we can see in the nearby, well, vicinity of where we found the changeling that might account for the transition through time. The problem is that it's in green space. How sure are you? That just, this... just barely. We could send a probe. That wouldn't be a problem. But how sure are you that this is related? Uh, not very sure at all, sir. It's just the best we've been able to come up with. We've got a brain fleet in the area, and it's going to be in range in less than an hour. So we have to be absolutely certain before we start running experiments in their space. Well, sir, there really is only one way to be certain, and that's to investigate it. It's right about then that the turbo lift goes and the doors open and it's just a quick jaunt across the hallway to sick bay. While we're jaunting across to sick bay, uh, Kijwick will call the helm officer to set course for the Takan remnant uh, and engage, but do not cross into brain space. Let me know when you get there. Yeah, and of course, Ensign Johnson, as we've named him, says, uh, you got it, Captain. Um, okay, we're done. I mean, we were already pretty close, sir. Hold here. Let me know when the Breen are in range. You got it. And yeah, it's right about then that uh, Kijwick, John, and Terrell step into sick bay. Dot egg. What's going on? Well, for one, Stetko, I specifically told you I could handle this and to not bother the captain with something so trivial. Uh, so Stetko's kind of walking in stride, explaining to the captain as he's walking, maybe mm -hmm. in. Yeah, and uh, like in lockstep, she's like, sir, I, I recommend we immediately move the ship. We need to get out of here. Your concern is about the brain. Yes. We are far outnumbered. We are. But if this Takan relic is the reason for this thing's presence here, outnumbered or not, the timeline is on the line. For lack of better words. Our lives could be on the line. Our lives are secondary. That's not the philosophy I operate with, sir. Temporal accords supersede our more thoughtful philosophies, Commander. I'm under orders. She kind of just huffs and then like stands for support if needed. Noted. So Dot Egg. Your, uh, your your sample there is outside of its container. Yes, it, uh, it managed to uh, break loose. It, actually, GM, do I know how it, the, the container shattered? Did, was it a was it faulty? Was it forced from the inside? Did it just fall off? You haven't scanned it yet, but uh, yeah, well, let's, if I may let's make a that. suggestion. You do now have a lovely Cation and human who could figure that out. <sighs> ah, yes. Um, Lieutenant John, Lieutenant Terrell, could you please scan this container to see if it was uh, structurally unsound? Do you not have a tricorder of your own? It's a medical tricorder. It doesn't scan inanimate objects all that well. Although I, mean, it, I, look, I'm, it looks uh, broken. That's insightful and thorough and exactly what I would come to expect from you, Mr. Terrell. If I, I thank may. you for your analysis. Determining how it broke doesn't help us with the fact that it now broke and the changeling is free and uh, it's... just out of character. Dottig, are you outside the force field? Are you still no. with it? I'm in still there. inside. Fortunate. Yeah, that's great. <sighs> it, it is only an infant, sir. And that doesn't mean we need to treat it like an it. Well, I, I mean... Well, very right. And as a matter of fact, I was attempting to treat it like an infant. 
and we set up a con a, a new container and beam it into it. I've got one right here, and I don't think we need anything quite so crass as a thing. We can just sort of scoop it in there. Explain what you're doing to it. To it, I'm. I mean, good idea. And he's just going to turn around back to the changeling and go, okay, I'm not yelling at you. I was just yelling at those people because they don't really know what they're doing all that much. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to take you and we're just going to scoop you very gently into this nice container. It'll be nice and safe and warm. And, and I'm spending two happen. threat because two things happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. First of all, your force field completely goes out. Uh oh, and the moment it's down, the changeling starts taking off like it literally turns into a rat and starts scrabble, scrabbling around sick bay. How does it know what a rat is? Computer, a record level 10 force field for around sick bay. Yeah. As the captain is yelling at the computer, Terrell, you want to make a dive for it? Yeah, he's going to try to jump on it. All right, I need you to roll me a fitness security, please. Difficulty of four because it's a rat. <laughs> I will go ahead and spend one of the momentum. To Only one? A... You've got four. No, just one. Just, just to one, give me okay. a chance. Which I still won't get, but it was worth a try. Yeah, only two, unfortunately. So yeah, you go slamming to the floor. The rat just sort of squeaks through your fingers. It uh, it runs around Stetco. Then it sort of looks up at Jana, shakes his head and goes, Nope. It starts running in the opposite direction. All right, so that thing is also going to try to get the rat and be like, yes, come here, come here, little buddy. Come on. You could, it's, it's all safe here with Dr. Keeve. Come on. I'd like you to roll me another presence medicine, please. Difficulty of four. All right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to buy an, uh, I'm going to spend, uh, uh, you know what? We're going to spend two momentum and um, I'm also to, to get an extra uh, d20 I'm also going to spend my determination by the sounds of it yeah uh, and tap my value do no harm yeah also side note I do the Benny Hill theme here but uh, DMCA <laughs> yeah. Great yak yakety sax hey four successes so yeah what I would say Dottig is either by happenstance or because you actually got through to it um, the rat leaps at you, and I like to imagine like you get it into the container as it's coming at you, and then you slam the lid on it. Why don't we just have that in a stasis field? It was in a stasis field. Oh, I thought it just had it behind a force field. How did the stasis field get turned off then? Well, I don't know, Chief Engineer. Maybe you ought to look into that. I hate this ship sometimes. <laughs> Can I take a scan of the power systems here, the uh, force yeah. field emitters, and the like? Mm -hmm. I'd like you to roll me a uh, reason engineering difficulty of two. And I know my ship would give me an extra die? It would indeed. Uh, starship construction? Yes, most definitely. Hey, that is uh, four successes, so you get two momentum. Oh, oh, please. So, Jana, you remember how I made a big deal about you fixing the laboratory because the EPS conduits weren't great, and how I also had Athena <laughs> pop in and say, yeah, they fucked up wiring the ship? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a whole lot more of that. Okay, this is not my fault. It's the fault of the design team that built this ship. I'm going to conveniently ignore the fact that it is kind of my fault because my engineering teams didn't pick up on all of this over the weeks that we've had this ship, but um, I don't know how to end that in a, in a way that doesn't make me look like I'm in the wrong here. Don't worry about it, Jonna. We have bigger fish to fry than why the force fields went out when they, the worst possible moment. It's, it's okay. All right. And I'm <clears> going to tell you all right now. Can you put it in stasis, Doc? And erect a I... containment field? Yes, I will do that again. However, if anybody hear you or you or you, and he's pointing at pretty much everybody in the in the room, he says, you just 
this is a child. And I won't have you running around here acting like it's some grave threat. It doesn't do it. It's not its fault. So you get out of my sick bay, you get out of my sick bay, and you get out of my sick bay. Stetko, you can stay. <laughs> John, you can stay until you fix my containment field. I, I, I was going to say, sir, I, I, I mean, I didn't want to interrupt Actually, your sort of rant, but... Shut up. Terrell, you can stay to help Jana. Captain, you're it, dismissed. Ishmik's going to go over to Stetko <laughs> Station. Oh. He's coming over yeah. to Stetko Station? Yeah. Said? Okay. <clears throat> She's just uh, observing. ETA on the brain. Let me check. Jeez. She leans over to <laughs> just, like, just like to check. She five leans minutes. over to check. Five, <laughs> five minutes. minutes. Great. Um, five minutes, sir. Uh, you ready? And, uh, yeah, always. Can you set up a class five probe? to check out the Tikhan signature and relay those findings to Jana's personal pad. I sir, I should have the coordinates. Wait a minute, Tikhan signature. Yeah, we think that's how uh, the founder came through. You mean like a yeah like, like stellar transporter? Like 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 guardians like Tikhan like you know, there's nothing to fear but founders themselves. Uh, we, 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 no, if, 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 Captain, 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 we can't send a probe. We have to go. No, we can't. We're going to be violating brain space. What to hell with brain space? We can't even, we haven't even confirmed that it's a stellar transporter yet. So, what's well, the only one way to find out? I mean, it's just, I mean, somebody has to go. Well, somebody will go. But somebody also has to talk to the brain while somebody surreptitiously gets there. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Jaro. Think, real quick, though, because at this point, I think you guys would know in character. Um, I'm just going to put you guys on the map in question um, just so that you can see sort of the area of space that you're in. And because that's going to affect your, your decisions from here on out. Um, so let me swap it over to this map. And if dynamic lighting is working properly, you should see that the Umbriel is down here to the lower uh, center stage, as it Ooh. were. Wow. And uh, let me point out sort of the features of this map. So everything that you're seeing, these asteroid field, this sort of debris field, um, that is feeding directly into the black holes. Um, as you can tell, there's two streams. There's one to the right, one to the left. Uh, both of those are ultimately feeding into the black hole. You could go through them, but even with Terrell at the helm, you're risking damage to the ship. Um, your other option, as you can kind of see the fringes of it up to the direct north, um, that's a micronebula. And going into the micronebula, you're probably going to have some adverse effects to the ship. Now, you're not going to know for sure until you send a probe into the nebula or go there yourself. But it's safe to say, based on the sensor readings thus far, you can't really get a whole lot of sensor readings from the nebula itself. So probably more of the same once you're inside it. Now, in terms of the rogue planet, the rogue planet is directly northwest past the debris field. Um, again, you could maybe get a probe through it, but it would take some doing. If I had to give you sort of the optimal path, you're looking at, well, flying through the nebula, then finding a way around the debris field to get to the rogue planet. But you do you. <laughs> um, just uh, probably because the display would have said it already, GM. Uh, mm -hmm. Is the Breen fleet, do they look like they're just on a standard patrol or are they beelining for Umbriel? They are beelining for the Umbriel. Wonderful. I, I have a question about the black holes. I might have an answer. Are they orbiting each other at Did all? You know, let, me, let me just very quickly move the token around so that the dynamic lighting will show you everything. There you go. Okay. So now that you see those two big black holes, hopefully, uh, one to the northwest and one to the northeast. Yeah. Um, the one with the rogue planet is that one to the northwest. 
and uh, the one to the northeast is the one emitting the X-rays, if you remember that little tidbit. Is there, are we able to detect any, with the scans we did, any kind of gravitational time dilation going on? Because Let's of just the... say that the black holes are kind of generating a whole lot of time-space abnormalities. Okay. And just, I do have a question, and this might be a momentum spend using perhaps that bonus momentum that uh, we got from the scans mm -hmm. in the uh, laboratory. And this is a question I'm throwing out to everyone. Are these black holes, given that it's strange to find two in such close proximity, are they naturally occurring, or is there something artificial about them? Mm. Well, to answer that question, you're going to have to go to the rogue planet, is what I would say. Everything is pointing at the rogue planet at this point. <laughs> mm. Are they super massive? Would we know that at least? Uh, the one, to, well, super massive is when I, when somebody says super massive, I think of like the black hole at the center of the Milky Way. Um, these are on a galactic scale. These are like baby black holes. Okay. Um, how about this GM? Are they like equidistant from the the planetary body that they're devouring? Um, at the moment, no. Um, the so if you imagine sort of like a Mobius loop. Mm -hmm. um, the black holes are always opposite each other on that Mobius loop until they get really, really close and then they whip past. And every time they whip past, more debris is ripped off the planet and more sort of stellar gases are ejected from uh, a nearby nebula. And that's what's creating these micro nebulas is it's tearing apart an actual nebula in the process. If we were to try to navigate uh, the asteroid field using a shuttlecraft, would we have the, the chance of escaping serious damage? Let's just size? say that again, uh, with Terrell at the helm, uh, you're looking at a difficulty four, difficulty five task. Because out of character for a minute, I would think that possibly we could send the Umbreo off at high warp attracting the Breen fleet with it and take the command crew out in a shuttlecraft that is, I suppose, suitably hidden uh, to try to make it to the rogue planet and investigate. That's one possibility. Just steal like my the plan Banshee. there, Matthew. Ooh. The Banshee does have stealth. We did yeah. bring the Banshee, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's, the, yeah. that's where my brain was going. So I think uh, that we're I on was, kind of a timer, maybe, here. I was going to have Kiswick, Kiswick stay with the ship and try to Oh, the God. Green fleet dip diplomatically while you guys went to the planet and figured out a way to send it back. Now, that is one thing we never discussed is... I was just I mean, about to ask, how many shuttle. people can we put in there? Yeah, like, I figure you could probably fit two easy, no problem, but three, four? I mean, you could do it. You're not going to be comfortable, but you could do it. Kiswick is definitely staying with Umbriel. We're not going to just take the Umbriel? Not to the rogue planet. Captain doesn't get to have all the glory. Are we sure we're just not going to need it once we get there? Like, Well, if oh. we attract an entire Breen fleet, we probably would, but it wouldn't help us. Oh, they might have reinforcements on the other side of that asteroid field that will definitely be able to... So what if we us. did a crybaby? It's always a crybaby with us, isn't it? We've only used it like once and that was in twice. We've only used it like twice. And I think that was in um Fenrir. It was Fenrir. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> worst case scenario. Worst case scenario if we Valid launched a crybaby. Strategy. If we launched a crybaby and the shuttle and sent Umbriel off in the direction, we split their fleet three ways. And got, like, honestly, this out. honestly, the only person that would be of any real help on the uh, Banshee would be Jana. Well, we need, we need, I would like to think that we need Dot Egg to curry the founder because it already has a relationship with it and that would be fewer hands. So Stetco and Captain could stay with Umbriel and you guys could go to the rogue planet. Mm -hmm. Is that a plan? Deal. Let's go. 
<laughs> yeah. Jaro, like uh, Jaro starts uh, heading off. Now all of that in character. <laughs> yeah, now all of that in character. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so we're okay. Yeah, so sort of, uh, I'll sort of draw on the map here. So I'm imagining that the Umbriel is going to be far to the south here. You're going to continue in that south direction. Um, the shuttle, or the Banshee, is going to be this yellow line, kind of snake into the rogue planet. And then if I understand the um, the crybaby, you're basically sending the crybaby off on this red line. Yep. All right. So, uh, then, I think that actually is, as everybody gets to their appropriate stations, I think that's an excellent time to do our 10-minute break, because I know, Dag, you've got your meeting in a little bit here. Um, so, we're going to take 10 minutes, and we'll be back uh, very shortly, so stick around, stream.
Welcome back, everybody. So if you're just now joining us, uh, the intrepid crew of Deep Space October, uh, Fee to the Umbriel, are sending out the Banshee to investigate a possible Takan stellar transporter that might be behind the temporal displacement of the Changeling that they have found. And uh, what we see is the shuttle bay of the Umbriel open, so sort of that back part of the Luna class opens up. And emerging from the shuttle bay is the grand, quote-unquote, Banshee. Now, the Banshee itself, um, its I, I like to imagine it sort of like a fusion between a Valkyrie fighter and the Batarang. Or what, what do they actually call Batman's... Um, Batwing. Batwing. Batwing, there we go, yeah. That would make sense. But yeah, sort of <laughs> a fusion of the two, where it's sleek, it's sexy, it's, it's everything you'd want out of a fighter craft. And uh, Terrell, you punch it out, the craft comes zooming out of the shuttle bay, and the moment you're clear of the ship, the Umbriel banks uh, almost 270 degrees and fires off a probe in the opposite direction that you're flying, Terrell. And the probe, yourself, and the Umbriel go in three separate directions in almost a Y formation. 
But yeah, so Terrell, this is your first real mission with the Banshee, so I don't know. Does she have any quirks? Uh, anything we should know about the Banshee? Uh, well, yeah, she's unfortunately a little temperamental going into Cloak. But, you know, hopefully she won't be too too uh, painful to us today. Okay. As uh, the chair that uh, Terrell is in swings, just slides in its place all the way to the right as he uh, engages the cloak and then it slides all the way back to the mi it slides back to the middle as he starts to uh, try to pilot through the asteroid field noted now what i would say is that engaging the cloak does require a task uh i just have to find where in my notes i put this oh we'll have jana put on the cloak then. all right uh you know what let me just go to my romulan source book that i made because i know it's in there all right, let's see. So Cloak is... Nope, nope, nope. I just want normal cloaking device. Here it is. Uh, I need a control engineering. And the ship will assist you with engine security. Uh, so someone's going to need to roll a uh, D20 for, this, uh, for the Banshee. Um, you want to see a 2 or lower in order to get a crit. Uh, but I would say also that it has a power requirement of three. And, you know, I probably should just set up a character sheet for the Banshee. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it does mean... I was just going to say, we don't have one. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd put one in there. That's my bad. But no, um, what I would say is this would require half of your power. Um, but if you're successful at this task, you're cloaked. And there's nothing I can do about it. Like, you're you're cloaked. Good job, Dante. Mm -hmm. So, Good control job, engineering. Banshee. Yep, that's, control that's engineering. Better. And uh, experimental technology, improvisation. All would apply. All of the above. <laughs> okay. Starship construction. <laughs> and I will spend one momentum to get an extra die. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you got the three you needed. So similar to that blue effect I described uh, with the captain earlier, the captain's ready room earlier. The running lights of the Banshee all sort of turn that bluish hue as you still see the interior of the ship, but outside we sort of see the Banshee sort of wave back and forth and disappear from view. You know, it's, a, it's just a shame and very nearly a crime that the Federation hasn't really invested in cloaking technology. The Treater of Algeron, horrible mistake. Well, I mean, at this point... No Romulan Star Empire. What uh, what do we care about the Treaty of Alderaan? No, I mean, it, it set us back by about 75 years in terms of the development of cloaking technology. Well, yes. I mean, when you consider the history of the, uh, the Pegasus experiment. I, uh, guys, I need to concentrate. I'm about to fly through a bunch of rocks. You could do Granted, that blindfold. They're giant, they're giant rotating space rocks, but still. All right. So, Terrell, I am going to say it was a difficulty five, but you're in the Banshee, so you're smaller size, a little bit easier to get through. So difficulty four. However, it's going to be a daring con. The Banshee will assist you uh, with a nine or lower, printing on a three or lower. And um, let's just say if you fail, you don't slam into the rock, but if you roll complications... You might. No pressure. Okay. Would it so... be possible for me to assist him, perhaps? If you tell me how. Um, I'd like to try to chart out a course um, analyzing the movement patterns of the asteroids relative to the gravitational pull of the, uh, the black hole that's sucking them in. Now, I know there is an actual task for that. I don't think I've ever had someone do it before. Let me just see if I can find it real quick. I'm a horrible character to do it, but I don't think anyone has any better con than two, so... Right. Um, let me just see, because it's I one do. of those where it's chart hazard or chart navigation, and I think this is the first time in any of my game that's come up, so let me just find it real quick. I also have the precision, precision maneuvering uh, talent. Which gives you... I forget, Reduces is it lower difficulty? difficulty? by one. Yeah, so it's a difficulty of three. Here it is. Uh, chart hazard. Uh, so yes, uh, what this is going to be... Um, actually, this is this is perfect, actually. 
Uh, the navigator using navigational sensors marks hazards in vicinity of the vessel and its planned course and determines the safest route around, past, or through them. This is a reason plus con, assisted by the ship's sensors plus con, with a difficulty of three. If successful, the difficulty of any task to avoid the hazard in question is reduced by two. So you would actually nice. bring it down to a difficulty of one if you pass this. Hmm. Okay. And I, could, the, I could save my determination for something else. <laughs> the uh, the Banshee would be assisting with a nine and two or lower would be a crit. Okay. Um, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I'm debating spending determination, but I don't think so. Instead, I'm just going to spend uh, one momentum to roll three dice. Okay. And it was reason and con, was it? Correct. Well, that's not going to go well. John, uh, you want to grab the ship? Uh, yeah, I figure I'll be rolling the piloting, so. All right. I, do just, I don't think I'm going to do as good. Here we go. Nope. Yeah, no help no from help the Banshee, there. unfortunately. Yeah. I can feel, I can feel it in my bones. I don't see any... No, focus, I don't think any no. focus here is going to save you. And there's the complication. So, here's what happens. Jana. Yeah, you you think you've treaded a very nice path through this, this debris field. You feed it to Terrell. Terrell? That difficulty is now a five. Okay. And, to make things even worse for you... Your complication range is 17 to 20. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, we are going to spend the determination. Mm -hmm. um, and the uh, determination is, uh, let's see what's out there. Because mm -hmm. we're trying to get to this cool planet. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to... I've got to spend a whole lot of stuff here. Uh, so I have to spend how much... How much to get a second die? It's two momentum or for third the second dice. die, and then if you want to, if or for the third die, it would be two momentum. For the fourth die, it would be two momentum, three threat. Okay, so two momentum, three threat, determination, uh, because by buying with die, I can use both con. So, mm -hmm. all right, so here we go, and that's daring con. Daring Khan and the Banshee will assist you on a 10. Uh, three or lower is a crit. And that's a four dice. Okay. All right, here we go. Nope, I have to say focus. Okay, there we go. Now we, here we go. That's okay, five. That, that is the five we need, but uh, that is a complication as well. I'm going to re-roll the one. The, the one complication. All right, no help from the ship. Uh, daring. <laughs> Con. One die. Focus. Blam. Hey! And you actually get a momentum back for your troubles. So yeah, Terrell, as uh, you get this feed, you realize at the last moment that Jana he meant well, but he didn't account for the... Uh, tug of the black hole's gravity well on this debris, or at least you didn't do it to a significant amount. Um, so as you adjust for that, we sort of see your spacecraft, your little fighter vessel, you do almost like a, a barrel roll or an Arion roll. God, I can speak today. You know the one I mean. Mm -hmm. um, you did a, do a spin, and as you do, the Banshee sort of skates past a rock that swings into view and the flat underside of the Banshee comes within maybe a meter of the rock. But you manage to just coast on through, and it's a dip and a dive, almost like a roller coaster. And thanks to the inertial dampeners, you don't really feel it as much, but I would like to flavor it that maybe Terrell doesn't keep the inertial dampeners oh, yeah. all that Because high. he likes the feel of the ship. He likes mm -hmm. to feel it. So they definitely pulled some Gs. Um, Which um, <laughs> is going to lead me to my next question. How do how do Jana and Datig feel about those Gs? I think what you'll hear from Datig as he's sort of zipping through the, the rocks is um, as they get close, he'll just rock, 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 and then just calm down as he puts, there's another one. 
And you see that Jana is just sort of white knuckling the uh, the restraints, the security harnesses, uh, including with his tail. So, and uh, when uh, when Terrell gets through, he's like, "Whew! Ah, oh, couldn't have done it without you, Jana." I, I'm sure that you could have. Next time, I think you probably should. Oh, your 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 navigation was spot on. Of course, he's lying through his teeth, but <laughs> yeah, I, I I appreciate that. Uh, it's a lot harder than I actually thought it would be, but thought I could help. Yeah, we just have to get back through. Oh, I think I'll walk. Goody. And he uh, beelines it toward the planet. Uh, just give me one moment, because mm -hmm. I have to find what I did with that map. I know it's here somewhere. It's probably in my archive. It may be archived accidentally. Uh, but I can at least say that as you all are flying towards the planet, um, sensors indicate that it is, conceivably, it's a Class M. Um, you're seeing flora. You're seeing fauna. Um, you're seeing all manner of... Not intelligent life, but life all the same. And as it comes into view, there's sort of that juxtaposition where you see, or you don't see, as it were. Um, you know the black hole is over there because of the swirling debris around its event horizon. Um, the planet itself is falling towards the black hole. Hasn't passed the event horizon, but you have limited time here. Um, and as you sort of swoop in towards the planet break atmosphere, um, what you end up emerging into is the following. Uh, what you see is grand forests. Now, that gas giant isn't there in the background, so just ignore that. But the forests themselves are midnight colored. And as the tinted glass of the Banshee adjusts, you're seeing all manner of bioluminescence at display here. Um, the trees are almost uh, framed by the bioluminescent pink vines that sort of trail off of their branches. The water is lit up by what could be schools or just a massive amount of fish and plankton and other sorts of life uh, giving off that sort of biological light. Um, you see waterfalls that are... Uh, cascading down from these large juts of rock. And they pour into these pools in different colors, almost like a prismatic spray uh, coming off of these waterfalls. And for everything else, I don't want to put any words in people's mouths, but this is a beautiful sight. This, this is amazing. Too bad it's going into a black hole. Uh, what are we here for? Again, uh, what are we trying to find? Uh, evidence of uh, Takan technology. And to that end, GM, mm -hmm. um, as we approach the planet, I want uh, Dr. Dati to conduct an intensive surface scan, uh, as well as get subsurface scans, if possible, for any um, signs of technology, architecture, or power generation. Fair enough. Uh, I would Banshee. like you to roll me a reason science. Uh, difficulty of three. Uh, the Banshee does not assist you, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spend that point of momentum. Sorry, and... I used up all our momentum, guys. Yeah, no worries. Oh, no. <laughs> it's entirely fair. Um, let's see. Would my... Would I have a focus on this, GM? I've got uh, Xenobiology. I'd give it to you because of the unique yeah. nature of the planet, yeah. You get three successes. You look at your sensor ratings, Dantic. Then you think, no, that can't be right. So you scan again. You get the same result. At this point, you're starting to question what you know about xenobiology. Simply because everything you're seeing, from the vines to the trees to the waterfalls, this is a planet-size bioreactor. Well, we're here. This entire planet. One gigantic reactor. Running 
drawing power from the abundance of life. A biological reactor. Engineering and medicine on a scale that boggles the mind. Absolutely boggles the mind. Um, do you think do you think it's possible to find a bridge? I mean, if it's a big power plant, maybe it maybe it has an ability to be flown. And hey, if it's got a if it's got a a con, I can fly it. Is there any indication as to what it's powering as well? Why would you build something like this? Yeah, are, would are say... there conduits anywhere? Well, what I would say is you don't have any momentum, but you could give me one threat. I will answer one question for one threat. And you can spend as much threat as you want, but it's one threat, one moment. Or one threat, one question. I think we should give him a threat for that, because that's a great question. Okay, so let's be clear. Which question are you wanting me to cl to clarify for you? I think John's. Okay, so are there conduits and other signs of a control room? Yes? Yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure, because this is one of the points in, in the lore that I have to be pretty clear on. All right, so you're looking at the scans, Dottig. You're looking at the scans, Terrell, Jana, and you're not seeing any conduits, at least not at first. But when you do sort of a deeper intensive scan... You know those bioluminescent lakes and rivers and waterfalls? Those are cooling mechanisms for the greater reactor that lies underneath the surface. So if you were to look into the rock where the waterfalls are coming out of, there are signs of artificial construction there. And deep into the water underneath the glowing water is what seems to be metallic structures, vaguely tube-shaped, uh, it's it's hard to get a, a concrete reading, unfortunately. Well, uh, is this ship actually capable of submersive operation? Or submersible operation? Well, I don't know. Well, no, you you know. <laughs> I was actually asking the GM. What yeah. I'm going to say is... Um, you can determine that on yourself, or we can just see what happens. Well, I have to admit that if it's if it's capable of staying in the rigors of space, it must be able to do something underwater. It's not like it's going to go under. <laughs> and yeah, with that, Terrell just <laughs> sort of fathoms. dives. That's the all. That's forward. all Terrell needed. <laughs> you dive the banshee forward, and you uh, splash into the water, and immediately your uh, external windows that you can see out of the cockpit. You're seeing eels, you're seeing schools of what might be some sort of piranha-like fish that is swimming around. Um, you're seeing great sunfish and angelfish. Uh, there's even what could be like giant lobsters uh, sort of on the rocky uh, bed of this waterbed. And right sort of in the middle at the deepest part... Um, you see that there is, again, that sort of metallic conduit that is just peeking out of the, um, the bed of this river. And I'm going to spend two threat because the Banshee was not meant for water. And that's represented by the fact that uh, there's a hiss and then Dottig. You know that sort of clown thing that they do with the seltzer where they spray each other in the faces with the seltzer? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what's happening with you and the exterior window of the Banshee right now. So there's a jet of water right into your face. I think we've got the bad seal here. Uh, I would like to immediately try to retrieve an emergency repair seal from the uh, mm -hmm. engineering compartment and I guess either put it in place or weld the transparent aluminum back into place. I told you you should have used self stealing stem bolts for the hole. And um, I'm going to spend two threat. Jana, you go to where the kit should be, but all you see is a note in your handwriting that says, Jana, replace this kit later. He's always one step ahead. <laughs> uh, can we get somewhere dry in the very near future? Uh, we're kind of on limited resources here. Uh, so Terrell's looking for any sort of potential shuttle bay or way to dock the ship. 
Uh, and he's like, can't you just weld it with a phaser? I don't know. Try something. Of course, the doctor does need a bath. Okay. Uh, as a callback to um, mm. Fenrir, I'm going to take out my engineering phaser instead of my medical phaser. Mm. <laughs> Can I set that and calibrate it to properly weld the... Oh, yeah. uh, Okay, well, then that's what I'll try to do. But what I would say is there's a complication window here of 17 to 20. Ooh. You're going to be rolling me a daring in engineering, difficulty of three. Oh, good. Um, can I think really hard about this problem and the kind of calibration that's no, necessary? No, you may to... not no. just think hard about this problem. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good try, though. That's a good try. Yeah, I have to give you an A for effort. Can I use my prehensile tail to <laughs> no. wield a second phaser and well, gain an well, advantage? Okay, <laughs> a second phaser. Yeah, that, that might be able to help you. I mean, whose phaser are you taking, Dottig's or Terrell's? Uh, let's vary it up. I have a type 2. Dottig probably has a type 1. Why don't we put them in conjunction? Let's... There you go. Yes, I will allow you to use your prehensile tail in this instance. Just be careful with that. It's a medical phaser. I, I hear those are pretty useful. Okay, so three uh, d twenty then. Yeah, because I think your your prehensile gives you an extra die. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Supposed to just wielding it in your other hand. It's just. Oh yeah, it's know. it's silly as all hell, but welcome this to ridiculous Star Trek. image. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> why I, that's why I love it. I, I'm gonna go with starship construction <laughs> because I am yes, fixing. Yes, actually, an... yes. Okay, so you didn't get the three you needed, but you've also rolled a complication. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Jana, uh, Dottig, Jana, you try to weld, but it um, doesn't go so well. In fact, you punch a bigger hole mm. through the cockpit window. Dottig, it's no mm -hmm. longer just like a seltzer spray. We're talking like full on next to an aquarium. Somebody has busted the glass. At this point, it's starting to like fill up the cockpit just a little bit. You know, Corral's going to try to erect a force field in the spot. I'm just on going you, to... On uh, you, on the whole... Just, the uh, just, like, sealing off the, the, uh, the cabin. Listen, okay. I think, uh, I think what I'm going to do is just get up out of this chair, and for a completely unrelated reason, I'm going to go check the emergency beacon. Nice. Nice. So yeah, uh, Terrell, uh, to do a force field, I am going to need a control and a security of difficulty of two here. All right, and uh, you're getting you're getting yourself a threat. Okay. Because <laughs> we need to get this up. Um, <laughs> shuttlecraft operations? <laughs> Actually, yes, I would give it to you. Awesome. Something that told me just... I'd be able to use it. Just difficulty of two. I, mm -hmm. I believe in you. No. No. Reroll. So, not only do the force field generators not work, <sighs> but... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, you can reroll one, so I will let you reroll the complication. Uh, uh, you can't, because it's oh, Daring no, Con. It's, it's Daring, daring Con. Or Bold Con, uh, yeah. I am going to... Uh, let's see... Uh, I mean, no, I think I, you'll enjoy the complication, but if you want a determination I your way out of it... don't have a value that makes sense to challenge here. All right, so I think yeah. what happens then is, Terrell, you push the button for the force fields, and the force fields kind of make a rear sound. So you push it again, like, what the hell was that noise? And like a dying cat, it just goes... Rrr. There's probably water in it. And if that wasn't bad enough, the complication is that the hull begins to creak as a giant sea serpent, or large enough to encircle the banshee, begins coiling around it. Uh, and you can see the coils of it begin to wrap around the banshee's windows, and it starts to try to crush your ship to death. Uh, can I so raise many... shields? <sighs> Uh, what I would say is that shields are a minor action. You just sort of push that button. So yes, you have a barrier between the creature and the shuttle, 
but it doesn't cut out the water. It doesn't cut out the pressure, at least not entirely, that the creature is pushing it on. Oh, we're, we're really horrible at this. Um... Uh, Terrell's going to try to scrape it off. Like against like a rock face or something? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, daring con, difficulty of two. All right, and I'll give you a threat just on that possibility of being able to re-roll a die. <laughs> All right. It's <laughs> the worst that can happen. More complications? Gentlemen, it's been an honor serving Zip with it. you. <laughs> Zip it. <laughs> you know what it is? Is uh, We folded groundskeeper. There you go. There you go. That's four successes. You get two momentum. Either oh, that or I was going to make you change your avatar again. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, what it is is... Um, you, we folded groundskeepers, so your groundskeepers luck came over. It, it mm -hmm. followed you. Great. But no, uh, with four successes, uh, yes, you are able to scrape the creature off, and you still have water pouring into the cockpit, but you no longer have to be worrying about being crushed to death. All right, somebody else deal with the water. I'm trying to look for a place for us to get in. Well, he's the Dude. engineer. Look, I, I, I took my tools. So I I suppose I have only myself to blame, but <coughs> can you can you like Dutch boy the hole for now? I don't know. What is a Dutch boy? I have no idea. I know Stick Dutch your chocolate. Stick finger but... in it. <laughs> can I set up some kind of recursive loop in the transporter to just beam the water out as it's flowing in? <laughs> The only reason I'm going to say you can or cannot is just remember every time you use a transporter, you lose a power. Mm. So <clears throat> if you want to do that, you basically give yourself a ticking time clock. Terrell is desperately looking for a place to put the ship. And yeah, like Terrell. Some sort of underwater, like the way that uh, submarines dock underwater. Yeah, like a moon pool. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, Terrell, you can either give me your two momentum to create the advantage that you spot something, or you can do a roll for it. You can have the two momentum because we're not rolling crap right now. <laughs> gotcha. And that is something I want to encourage you guys to do is if you have two momentum floating around, spend it to create an advantage, change something in the scene. But yeah, uh, through this whole nonsense, Terrell, you kind of come out on the other side of the metal pipe at the bottom of the... Uh, river floor and as you do you see that uh, part of the pipe is open at the bottom and you do see the shimmering surface of something you there, there's an atmosphere in that pipe so what you do is you swoop down come up underneath the pipe and then raise up and when you do uh, you emerge into a breathable atmosphere so immediately the water stops pouring in and just the scent of what might be uh, stale air is how I think I would best describe it is just air that hasn't been circulated in quite a while just sort of begins to waft through the hole uh, in the hull of the Banshee. Terrell, Terrell just mutters under his breath. Great, my ship's wet. Both of them are going to smell like wet dog. <sighs> All right, Let, let's let's head let's head out. And while that's dog. going on, we're going to briefly cut back to the Umbriel. Because at this point, and I know he's not here yet, but I did want to give Watney some screen time. Uh, at this point, uh, Stetko, since you no longer have a changeling to guard, I imagine you're on the bridge. And uh, what you're seeing on the view screen is the Breen fleet getting closer and closer and closer. And normally that wouldn't be an issue. I mean, the Luna class can outrun a lot of things. But what you're seeing is a large number of... Let me make sure I say the right thing. Uh, you're seeing a large number of Chell Greet classes. Now, the Chell Greets are basically, um, if you'll imagine, a pitchfork. Instead of three prongs, it's four pronged. And it's there's about four or five of them that are coming right at you. But also to your dismay, you do see that two split off towards the rogue pla or the rogue planet and two split off to go check out the crybaby. 
you are muted as well, as is tradition. So how many total are there? There are eight total. Okay. Um, so we have four incoming to the Umbreal, two mm -hmm. that have left to the planet, and two that have left to the crybaby. Correct. Okay. Um, do the ones approaching the Umbreal seem to be posture posturing in any kind of aggressive manner? Are their weapons hot? Their weapons are definitely hot. Their weapons are hot. Okay. So Stedco is going to uh, talk to the computer. Mm -hmm. Computer, I want you to broadcast on all uh, all frequencies, uh, quarantine field uh, or quarantine message. Uh, it's going to say extreme caution. The USS Umbriel is a quarantine vessel by order of Starfleet Command. Do not board and leave it at that. And uh, since Athena is the computer in this instance, she just sort of appears next to you all hologram like and goes, I mean, I've, I've sent the message, but I don't know if they're going to buy it. Just leave it playing. I, sure. Um, anyone notice the captain's kind of catatonic right now? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, and it's one of those things where it's, you know, now that Athena's drawn attention to it, you look at the captain and he's like frozen in place, like full on, not even blinking, just frozen in place. Perfect. So Stutko's taking command of the bridge. All right. Since and, uh, on. <laughs> so. I think uh, Ensign Johnson kind of turns around in the chair and goes, um, ma'am, what, what? What should we do? Wait. Just, just, I mean, should I put more distance, more, more juice to the engines? We're just going to wait. Signal the quarantine beacon and wait. I, uh, okay. And then you wait. And we're going to cut back to the other group because I like to build dramatic tension. So uh, I don't really have a uh, pipe interior for this one because I, I honestly imagine you guys would have just landed and explored normally. What was I expecting? <laughs> uh, so we'll just go to Theater of the Mind for this one. But yeah, it's basically just a large rusty pipe that you're in, like um, almost like a Los Angeles um, sewer slash waterway where it, you could tell that this is meant to be flooded during certain times. Uh, this is not one of them. Um, but as you proceed down and your footsteps echo across the metallic walls, um, you eventually come to what might be a door. And when I say what might be a door is because you're looking at it. It's just a, about an inch depression in the wall that is vaguely, I don't want to say rectangular. It's more kind of a fusion between an oval and a rectangle. So maybe a rounded rectangle would be a good descriptor. Um, but the difference is, is you're not able to see a control panel. You don't see any hinges. You just sort of see this depression in the wall. Okay. Uh, ideas. And, and sorry for the wet dog comment. Gosh. It's a high stress situation. It's a, it's okay. I, I don't take offense. I'm used to the casual racism and the like now. It's just... You know, you know that's really sad. It is, isn't it? I think I think you should all feel guilty about that. At any rate, can we get any sensor scans as to what might be on the other side of this door, or is it blocking our scans? What you would notice is when you pull out your tricorder, you can scan back the way you came. You can get to the banshee. But you're not getting through the walls of this pipe. And that includes this supposed door. Terrell just, all right. Sometimes experimentation is the best way. And he puts his hand in the depression. And you do it. It opens up. <laughs> he just throws his hands in the air. And it's one of those things where almost blindingly light spills out of it, so you can't even see what's on the other side. But yeah, you opened it. Now the question is, do you go into it? Oh yeah. All right. Well, let's just go. 
And Dag is back. So Dag, if you want to turn your camera back on, we can cut back and do dramatic tension. So uh, as we return to the Umbriel Bridge, uh, Captain Kijwick, uh, I'd like to imagine that you quite literally just lose a few minutes. It's one of those things where you blink and then the next thing you know, everybody's in different locations on the bridge. And as you come back to yourself, you hear Athena going, yeah, I'm telling you, they're getting closer. They're just going to shoot at us. We need to move. Commander, what's happening? That's you, Wande. Um, <laughs> sir, I uh, <laughs> established a quarantine beacon in the hopes to save time for our away team. Um, my eventuality was that we would leave them on red, as it were. <laughs> not a bad idea if they think that we've picked up something from somewhere in this region they might let us go two there's eight ships total two have broken off to the crybaby and two are actually going towards the rogue planet itself and four are headed directly our way their weapons are hot all right um uh red alert obviously sorry um, I, I lost a little bit of time there. Red alert. Uh, weapons to stand by. Hmm. How else can we play this quarantine? Did your message say whether it was biological or technological? Uh, I to left my knowledge, it, it wasn't. I left it vague for a reason. But given that the brain wear uh, refrigerant <laughs> suits, uh, might be good to do a bit yeah. of both. They tried to board. Probably protect them from any supposed biological. Hmm. All right. Um cut EPS power to decks four, eight, twelve, and fifteen, and fluctuate power on decks in between that, except for uh decks one through five. And uh, let's see if they hail us. Hi, sir. All right. So as that happens, the light, the running lights of the Umbriel begin to flicker. Just for dramatic effect, even the bridge lighting flickers. And we sort of see an exterior shot of the Umbriel um, moving in space, sitting in one place. Because I do want to be clear on that. Are you actively moving away or are you sitting in one place? Uh, we should be at uh, some level of impulse away okay. from the area where we were infected. Got it. So as the embryo slowly creeps forward uh, in the stars, uh, we see four of those Chell Greed classes swoop in and begin to bear down on the embryo. But before we get to that, we're going to return to Theater of the Mind because I think it's better than just a stark white map. Because quite literally, uh, Terrell, Jana, and Dottig, when you step through the door, you emerge into what is essentially a white void. You can't really tell how far it goes. You can't really tell where the light's coming from. But this is, to put it plainly, this is almost like a Bajoran orb experience, just without any profits around. And it's one of those things, too, where after you step through, you turn around to see if you can get back through the door... You don't see a door anymore. Uh, hello? And your voice echoes a little bit, so... Hello, hello, hello. So cool. Hello! <laughs> and of course, that echoes a little bit louder. This is great! Um, uh, I think it's the exact opposite of great. There's nothing in here. It's just a white void... There's nothing we can interact with. There's there's no technology in here. Or seems, is there? Seems very sterile in here. Would be uh, perhaps a good operating theater. Uh, Terrell's going to imagine a path. Okay. What does it lead to? To... Uh oh, I might be dropping frames. Hold on. 
Yeah, my internet just took a big nosedive. Yeah, I am. I'm roboting. Hold on. Yep, saw that coming. All right, well, uh, it looks like I've lost connection here. So bear with me. I know Twitch isn't able to hear this right now, but uh, recording, bear with me. I'm going to see if I can get um, signal back here. Let's see. Yeah, because I am dropping all the frames. All right, let me just go to that. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go to BRB. Um, hopefully by five, ten minutes, I'll be back. But uh, stick around. All right, so unfortunately, it looks like my internet is out for quite a while. Uh, my entire neighborhood is out. So YouTube, this is where I have to end the stream. Um, unfortunately, it is one of those. Oh, well, hold on. I might have spoken too soon. Hold on. Are we back? We might be back. Uh, okay. I think we have part of that back. Hold on. Stream says it's going. Uh, now if Discord could come back. Nope, there it goes again. <sighs> All right. Um, hmm. Yeah, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to just end the stream here. 
and uh, we'll pick up next week, unfortunately. Sorry about that, but uh, we are sort of at the whim of technology. But um, see you later, YouTube. Sorry for the scuffed end.